In today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to set up Virtual Boy emulation using RetroArch. So for those of you out there hoping to play your 16 or so Virtual Boy games on your PC, this is the tutorial you've been waiting for. Nah, it really isn't that hard, honestly. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is RetroArch. So head on over to RetroArch.com, click on the Download tab, scroll down to the bottom here, and click on Nightly Builds. Now this tutorial is for Windows, so I can't guarantee that any other platform will have this Virtual Boy emulator, so just go ahead and click on Windows, x86-64, and scroll all the way down to the bottom yet again, and download RetroArch. Now if for whatever reason you download RetroArch, get it extracted, and it doesn't run, you need to download this redistributable.7-zip, extract that, and run it, and you should be good to go. Now that RetroArch is downloaded, go ahead and get it extracted. For demonstration purposes, I like to leave my stuff on the desktop for all of you. But make sure you put this where you want it to be for your own personal storage needs. When you run RetroArch for the first time, it does default all of its directories into itself, so if you end up moving it later, it will not work. So just to give you a quick example here, open up the RetroArch folder, run RetroArch, and it creates a retroarch.config file that defaults, that showed all the default directories there. Blah, can't talk. Oh well. Anyway, if that ends up happening to you, just go ahead and delete the config file, and that way you can start from scratch wherever you move the folder to. So, again, just put it where you want it the first time, save yourself the headache. Now, go ahead and open up Retroarch. Press F on your keyboard to go into full screen mode. Now go over to Online Updater, Core Updater, and press right on your keyboard to go down to the Nintendo section, and we are looking for Virtual Boy, which is down at the bottom of the Nintendo list. So Nintendo Virtual Boy Beetle VB, the only option available for Virtual Boy. Poor Virtual Boy. Once that's finished downloading, go ahead and press backspace twice, and now we can begin loading up Virtual Boy games. There really is no other setup required for Virtual Boy. It's download the core, load up your games, you're good to go. And there you have it, there is Virtual Boy up and running in RetroArch. There really is not much to this, like I said. So the cool thing about Virtual Boy is it does have a pretty wide aspect ratio by default, which is really nice for modern computers. It's not going to look too bad on a 16x9 display. Uh, if you don't mind the red and black color scheme of Virtual Boy games. Now, there are some core options available for Virtual Boy, which I will show you now since this is going to be a short video, why not? Now, if you have a 3D TV or display, you can actually still play Virtual Boy games in 3D, and I kind of tested it out on our 3D TV, and it was pretty cool. Gives you that Virtual Boy feeling without the nauseating headset and awful controller, so I guess there's that. Yeah, but... Go ahead and mess with it, see which one uh, works for your display. Now, Anaglyph is how you would play it if you don't want to use any 3D modes, or if you have some of those old-school red-blue 3D glasses, you could turn those on with the Anaglyph preset here as well. But if you don't want to play in 3D, just leave that off. Now, if you really do not like that red and black color scheme, you can change it to a more traditional emulated Game Boy black and white. There's also some pretty uh, crazy color combinations going on here. So you can do black blue, black cyan, black electric cyan, black and green, black and magenta. That one's pretty neat. Black and yellow. Not bad. But if you want the authentic feel, you are going to stick with that black and red because that's what the Virtual Boy display had on it. And so this just gives you all the authentic feels. Next up, if you have a controller plugged in, you can map the right analog stick to a D-pad if you want. And then there is the CPU emulation accuracy mode. There's faster, there's accurate. You should not really have any issues by using accurate on most systems, so if you do experience slowdown, just change it to fast. But that does it for core options. I don't believe there are any control options for Virtual Boy, so yep, nothing. It's... Yeah, nothing. No, no special controllers for Virtual Boy required. 
So yeah, that is it as far as Virtual Boy is concerned. It's download and load up. So if that's all you're looking for, congrats, you are done with the video. For the rest of the video, I am just going to show you how to get a Virtual Boy playlist set up to include your Virtual Boy games in so you don't have to use the file browser to select them. So I'm just going to go ahead and close out of 3D Tetris here. And we're going to go down to the Show Desktop menu. Press OK over here. And now we're going to right click over in this white space here and hit new playlist. Now we're gonna type in Nintendo space dash space Virtual Boy. And that gives us a Virtual Boy playlist complete with a Virtual Boy headset right here. How awesome is that? From here, you're gonna right click in this space, add folder, and I have my game stored on the desktop, once again for demonstration purposes, but you're gonna to scroll to where you have your game stored, and I'm gonna select my Virtual Boy games folder. For Core, Beetle VB, Database, Nintendo Virtual Boy. Okay. And it found the three Virtual Boy games that I own. So 3D Tetris, Mario Tennis, and Virtual Boy Wario Land. I don't know why it was Virtual Boy Wario Land. That was weird, but whatever. Now, if you want to further pretty up this playlist, you can go ahead and right click over on the Nintendo Virtual Boy entry, download all thumbnails, this playlist. Now, games do need to be named specifically for this automatic downloader to work. If you don't have them named right, it won't find the box arts. Thus, this is why it is named Virtual Boy Wario Land. Yeah, I know the box says Virtual Boy Wario Land, but come on, it's just Wario Land for crying out loud. Anyway, it looks like it was able to find all of my box arts, but this Mario Tennis box art has this weird for display only tag going on on it, and I don't really care for that. So what I like to do in the case of a box art I don't like or missing box art is head over to GameFAQs because it has an awesome media section where you can click on it and find display boxes for most games. Fortunately for Mario Tennis, it looks like they still have that same stupid for display only box art, so that's unfortunate. Looks like it's still a little bit better quality than the one that was already there though, so screw it. Go ahead and hit right click, save image as, I'm going to save it to the desktop. And then you just go ahead and drag it over to the box art window over here and it will replace an existing image or put it there in the first place. There we go. A little bit better. Now to get this playlist to show up in RetroArch, all we got to do is close down the program and relaunch it. Now over on the left hand side of the screen we have an awesome Virtual Boy entry complete with Virtual Boy controller and the Virtual Boy cartridge icons, and then box arts over on the right. It's pretty awesome. And then to play your Virtual Boy games from the playlist, you just click on the one you want to play and hit run. And that's it as far as Virtual Boy setup is concerned. That's how you get the games running, that's how you get playlists made, and the core options that were available. Again, there's not a lot of Virtual Boy games out there, but there is a growing homebrew scene, so there's some pretty cool stuff that you can actually do on Virtual Boy these days, so being able to emulate it is pretty great. But that's going to do it for today's video, so as always, thank you so much for watching it and helping support the channel. I cannot thank you all enough for the continued and ongoing support you've shown me. I'm glad that the content that is being made here can um, appeal to a lot of you. Thank you. So, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that sub button, that like-dislike button, just depending how much you like today's tutorial. And if you'd like to further help support the channel, you can go ahead and click on that join button here on YouTube or check out my Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. As always, I am just grateful for the consideration and for your generosity. I seriously, I cannot thank you enough. And to all of my current patrons and members, thank you so, so very much. You are my friggin' champions. You keep this going. But until next time, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.